Blackmagic has just released their free phone app for the iPhone. First of all, if you're not familiar with the Blackmagic company, they make high-end cinema cameras. They also make video controllers for capture and live streaming, as well as the fantastic free video editing software called DaVinci Resolve. This is used in Hollywood movies, and Resolve has all the power of the other editors like Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro. And the free version will probably cover anything you'd ever want to do. So it was exciting when they announced their new iPhone app. So let's take a look at the features that it has to offer. At the top left, we have the different cameras that are on your iPhone. Tapping on this opens a panel with all your lens types. Here we have the 26 millimeters or normal 1X lens. So we could choose our 13 millimeters lens for the ultra wide, for example. Or we could choose our 77 three times tele lens. Tapping anywhere on the screen will set the focus and exposure for the area that you tap on. In this case, the cushion. However, in this case, it compensates so much that it blows out the bright window behind the sofa. So let's go back and choose our 13 millimeter ultra wide lens. Now tapping on the sofa again, gets a much better exposure for the room and the bright window. If you press and hold on the screen, you'll get a round reticle showing that your auto exposure and auto focus are now locked. Tap on the screen again to unlock it. Next we have our frame rates. Tapping here shows a slider where you can select 24 to 60 frames per second. Tapping the top left frame rate will close the slider again. Next we have the shutter. Tapping this brings up a slider that shows shutter speed. In our example, I've left it at 1 over 48 as we have 24 frames per second, which as we know is the correct for motion blur. You can also change the shutter from speed to shutter angle. If that's what you want, you can do this by going and click on settings Go to camera and you can change the shutter from shutter speed to shutter angle. Then select camera top right to go to the main capture screen. Now we see that the shutter is now in degrees. So it's easy for you to just set it to 180 degrees and it'll always be double your frame rate. Next we have the iris, which is actually your camera aperture. And it'll depend on your camera that you choose and it's fixed, you can't change it. The top center is the recording time in hours, minutes, and seconds. And this will show you the time that the last recording that was taken. Next is the ISO. Tapping this shows a slider where you can change your ISO value. You'll also notice that whenever you move the slider for the shutter or ISO, the little blue letter A disappears. This A tells you when you're in auto mode. Here we move the shutter to 1 over 33. We can lock the shutter. And you see the little lock on the icon screen appear at the top of the shutter. And the big blue lock is on at the top of the slider. However, if you want to get back to everything in full auto, it's not quite that obvious. But click on the exposure compensation plus minus button, select auto and everything is back in auto again for the shutter and ISO. Tap the plus minus button again to close the slider. Next we have white balance, which is currently in auto mode. Tapping this brings out the slider, which shows that we're at 5240 Kelvin or bright daylight. We see that we're in auto mode by the large blue auto button at the top of the slider. Tapping the auto button turns it off. We also have the presets for white balance on the right side. We have daylight, incandescent bulb, fluorescent tubes, shade, and cloudy. This is where we can drive the white balance until it looks like it does to our eye in real life. Let's leave it at 4200 Kelvin and we can lock it at this value. We have the same sliders with a tint, allowing you to unlock the tint. If you want to add more magenta or green to the tint cast of the scene. Hitting auto will set it all back to what the camera sees 
as its best values. Top right we have resolution. Tap the cog settings wheel lower right. Go to record. Go to codec. And here's all the settings you can recording. As a side note, the latest update from the app, Apple ProRes 4444 has been removed. If you're using the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max, you can also choose Apple Blog. And this is a desaturated format used to capture more details for color grading and post. Clicking back, you can also set your resolution here. And here we have 4K, 1080p, and 720. Clicking the camera icon takes us back to the main screen. Lower left, we have a histogram for exposure. So if we increase the exposure by increasing the ISO, for example, we see that the histogram responds. Let's click auto again and set it back to the original value. In the middle, it shows us that we're using an iPhone, the amount of recording time we have left based on the settings we just set, and we have 89% battery left, and the storage we have left on our phone in gigabytes. Bottom right, we have an audio meter showing the internal mic levels. Tapping this once opens up a bigger panel in the center of the screen. However, the gain can't be adjusted here. Add in an external mic allows us to adjust the gain slider so that it can be adjusted. Here I've attached the DJI auto mic system. And by tapping the audio bar, I can now have access to the mic gain slider. Tapping it again, closes the slider menu. If you simply swipe down on the screen, this will hide the menus for a clean image. And by swiping down again, it makes the image and menus reappear. The top right icon will open up a lot of other features for you. The top one is the exposure zebras. The sliders allows you to set this exposure value. And when you want to see the overexposed zebras, like here on the windows. The next one here is focus peaking display. And that can also be set to choose other colors in the settings menu. Next, we have our grid lines and center points. Again, the color can be changed in settings. Next, we have aspect ratios. And we can use the slider to show you the safe areas to shoot in different aspect ratios. So for example, if I wanted to shoot in a two to one aspect ratio, this gives you a nice on-screen guide for you to make sure that your composition stays within the guide. Next is a safety guide that comes up on the screen. And again, you can use it to make sure that all the important things you want are in your frame, are actually in the frame. And you can just make sure that nothing gets outside of these guidelines. So if this black microphone box was important to the scene, but if we placed it wrong like this, we see that it's hanging outside of the composition and we can easily see that by the guide box. Next we have false color, which is a great tool for exposure levels. And we also have an inbuilt color guide on the side of the screen. So now we're for adjusting exposure or skin tones, we can see the color change on the screen. Finally, we can also add a LUT if we were shooting in log so that we could see what the color would look like as a preview. Next, we have our focus slider for manual focus. If you tap anywhere on the screen, the focus will adjust for that position. If you tap and hold, you get an auto exposure and auto focus lock. Tapping the screen once again, or tapping the auto focus at the top of the slider, sets it back to the autofocus. Here we have the exposure compensation plus minus slider, 
to lighten or darken the image and as we know this will adjust the shutter and ISO combinations to brighten or darken the image. Then we have stabilization and there's four modes here off, standard, cinematic and extreme. Let's leave it at cinematic for now. Next is a slate. We can organize your file names, scene names, and other information to organize your footage as you see fit. We've already looked at the camera and any footage that you filmed is under media. Here you can manage your files and upload them to the iCloud, but we'll talk about this in a minute. In settings, there's a lot more items like for audio and monitor. You can also add LUTs here. And if you mess up, you can always return to all the default settings. Go back to default, go to reset, and reset your camera settings. Next, we have the Blackmagic Cloud. Blackmagic offer a cloud-based storage systems for a monthly fee. This allows you to get compatible Blackmagic cameras and the camera app to be able to upload their footage, proxies and original files to a shared cloud DaVinci Resolve project. So multiple users can edit the footage. It works by creating a Blackmagic cloud account. In the media tab, it'll show all the clips that you have remote access to enabled. From there, you can connect to the remote project that has been created. In settings and media, you can configure to upload proxies only or originals and proxies. Now, when you record and press the stop button, this will automatically start uploading your footage to the cloud. So the person viewing the project in that cloud system will have access to these images and can start editing. So who is this feature for? Maybe if you use a separate editor to edit your videos, or you have multiple people working on the same project in different locations, or maybe a running gun news feature person that needs quick turnaround. Anyway, this feature is available from version 18.6 of DaVinci Resolve. In the next video coming up, we'll take the camera out in the field and get some shots and footage to see how it handles in the real world environment. Until then, happy filmmaking, and if you want to go further into this world of mobile content creation, check out our online courses that are available on our website.